Hey guys, everything new under the sun. Welcome to another uh, Bible prophecy update. Um, and we are uh, back in the book of Enoch. And uh, this is part three, I believe. We're going to take a look at two sections of the book of Enoch. And this is uh, um, put together by Ken uh, Johnson. You can buy this on Amazon. It's uh, $10. And uh, this is just the ebook that we're looking at here. And uh, Ken Johnson goes through a lot of ancient books. Um, you know, the book of Jasher. And. Um, the Apocrypha and uh, you know all these ancient writings um, which are uh, not canon not part of the Bible but um, uh, but are but are interesting to look at and he kind of weighs out uh, which of these books kind of lines up with the Bible which don't uh, which may have some value in them and uh, which don't and uh, he's a <clears throat> a great uh, theology guy for this kind of stuff and he has his own YouTube channel as well so you can uh, search, him, search him on YouTube uh, so this is part three we're gonna go through um, uh, two sections and we're going to read through it let's uh, look at them here we're going to go through the 70 generations and uh, we're also going to look, look at the dream of two houses now the dream of two houses is interesting it speaks of the destruction of the world by by water and then by fire and obviously we've had the flood and coming is the fire so that's interesting and so we're just going to go and, and read through it and I'll add uh, commentary where, where uh, you know I think is interesting or appropriate and uh, we'll just uh, <clears throat> basically uh, think on it and uh, put your put your uh, uh, Jesus glasses on put your thinking caps on line this up with uh, scripture and um, in in where where it does speak about things that are spoken of in scripture it does line up very well um, so it's uh, very interesting uh, from that point of view because it gives us a lot of background on, um, you know, the demons, um, the angels, the Nephilim, um, all the pe all the people, all the angels, all the beings that were uh, around there after, or sorry, before the flood, and um, uh, even after the flood, uh, actually. So let's go to the seventy uh, generations here, <clears throat> and I'll just start reading it, and and, uh, and like I say, just just listen, sit back, um, and. Uh, Think about what it means in uh, as as you relate it to the grand story of uh, you know the book of Genesis. Um, I was going to say the whole Bible, but really the book of Genesis, and and line it up with that. The Lord said to Michael, "Go tell uh, Samyaza and his associates who had defiled themselves by marrying women, women." Now, of course, um, the previous chapters, where did the giant co giants come from? That was uh, part two of the series. We spoke about, uh, you know, how did the giants come about? They came when the angels uh, came and slept with the uh, the women of man and um, created these uh, god-like uh, giants and uh, the, the super, um, the renowned uh, men of old, the strong, the mighty men, um, the, the supernatural uh, men, basically. <clears throat> Uh, who have defiled themselves by marrying women, that they and all those they contaminated will be destroyed. And uh, that was the purpose of the flood, to destroy them, obviously. When they have seen their sons slay one another and all their loved ones destroyed, bind them for 70 generations. Um, now the XXX there, that re, uh, goes to the uh, <coughs> further definition. And basically it says the, the XXX is um, the time of... Uh, Enoch to Jesus. So, at the top, top uh, left here, according to Luke three twenty three to thirty eight, and that is the best way to interpret scripture, right? I googled this, and uh, someone else uh, came up with a suggestion that uh, you know maybe that seven generations ends in the year nineteen hundred. Now, I didn't really get a lot into that, but certainly, I, I didn't see scripture backing it up um, as I was quickly reviewing it. Uh, but certainly, where scripture backs it up, I think uh, we'll go with scripture there. That makes a lot more sense. There were 70 generations from Enoch to Jesus Christ. And of course we know Jesus Christ, his death on the cross, finished it, finished, conquered death, and uh, uh, finished it for all of us. The miracles associated with Azazel, a uh, ritual performed on Yom Kippur each year, stopped when the Messiah died on the cross. See ancient messianic festivals, uh, page 99 and 119. Jesus made atonement and ascended to heaven. The fallen angels remained bound until the 70 generations passed and Christ completed his work. Now they await their judgment to be cast into the lake of fire. <clears throat> so they're waiting to be cast in the lake of fire. I wonder why they were put into into the valleys for that 70 generations. Is it because uh, they were basically stirring up too much trouble for man? Um, but, but why 
why until the death of Christ? And and so I don't uh, quite know that I'm, you know my theology maybe isn't there to explain that something about the the finishing work of Christ on the cross um, uh, resolved that basically. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he did go down to Hades. I think. Let me let me let me find that. So uh, apparently the, the theology about um, uh, Christ, uh, you know, Jesus uh, descending into hell comes from uh, this is First Peter three, uh, starting in verse eighteen. For Christ also hath suffered, hath once suffered for sins, um, the just for the unjust, um, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. So the spirits in prison they're suggesting is um, a reference that he went uh, basically into uh, hell, um, you know, the holding place before the, the, the grand lake of fire at the end, and uh, spoke to them. So somehow, i um, not quite sure how it relates, but somehow this is uh, related to the 70 generations and, and some work that needed to be done uh, that needed Jesus to die on the cross uh, and then, um, you know, that 70 generations uh, were up. So let's go back to uh, where we were here. If I can find it. Alright, so at the top here. Um, Until the day of the judgment and, and of their end, till their uh, last judgment be passed for all eternity. In those days they will be led off to the fiery abyss. Um, is that the lake of fire, to the torment and the prison in which they will be confined forever. And again, you saw that word prison in uh, in First Peter there, First Peter 3. Uh, and whosoever was condemned and destroyed will be will from thenceforth be bound together with them to the end of all generations. Destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers because they have oppressed mankind. So the gods, the mighty men of old, um, the, the giants, uh, basically, all, all those will be destroyed because that, cause that's not God's. That wasn't God's original uh, design. There, destroy all wrong from the face of the earth, and let every evil work come to an end. And then it starts talking about the millennial reign here. And let the plant of righteousness and truth appear, and it will prove a blessing. The works of righteousness will be planted in truth and joy forevermore. Then will all the righteous escape and live till they could beget a thousand children. And that is uh, speaking about uh, living uh, old age, living to an old age in the millennial reign. Let's go to the, the link here. And it's at the top uh, left here. Uh, they would have to live to 1,000 years old to be able to do this, to, to have a, you know, a thousand children, I guess. This problem is not saying that they will beget but that in the millennial reign, they will live the same long lifespans that existed before the flood. So that, that's pretty cool stuff there. <clears throat> All the days of their youth uh, and old age will uh, they complete in peace. So again, the millennial reign under um, um, Christ reigning on earth. This is going to be an example to all the people, all the people, the saved and the unsaved, um, that uh, God is the God, the creator God. Uh, he's the ruler and he reigns. And uh, yet at the end of the millennial period, um, there will still be people who absolutely reject and there will be one final battle. Uh, amazingly, even though they live in peace for a thousand years, um, they still don't want to follow him. Then will the whole earth be tilled in righteousness and will all be planted with trees and be full of blessing. All the desirable trees will be planted on it and they will plant vines on it. And the vine which they plant will yield wine in abundance, and each seed which is sown will bear a thousand, and each measure of olives will yield ten presses of oil. So it's going to be restored uh, to um, Eden-like uh, uh, conditions, I think, and, and that's basically what it's uh, describing there, a, a massive abundance. Um, the earth is not going to withhold its produce anymore. It doesn't sound like it anyways um, here, and this is what was happening in the Garden of Eden uh, before initial sin. Uh, because after that, um, the, the you know the the men had to toil and work hard and till the ground, and the earth wasn't as uh, easy, uh, wasn't uh, as uh, giving uh, in terms of growing plants. It wasn't as easy to grow plants as it was, um, you know, in the garden pre pre sin basically. Cleanse the earth from all oppression, unrighteousness, sin, godlessness, and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth. Destroy from off the earth 
Then all the children of men will become righteous, and all nations will worship me, and all and will praise me, and all will worship me. And the earth will be cleansed from all defi defilement, sin, punishment, and from all torment. I will never again send a flood of water upon it from generation to generation. And again, that's that's one uh, section which obviously agrees with the Bible because God said he would not bring a flood again. And the rainbow was a promise of that. Obviously, the rainbow is hijacked uh, you know, as a symbol. And we all know what it, that means now, but um, that's a perversion of, uh, of that symbol. Uh, absolutely, um, a hijacking of it. In those days I will open the store chambers of blessing which are in the heavens and send them down upon the earth over the work and labor of the children of men. And truth and peace will be associated together throughout all the days of the world and throughout all generations of men. Enoch was hidden before all this came to pass. No one knew where he was or what he was doing. So this is a really cool background story of you know what what's Enoch doing here. Um, so in interesting stuff. No one knew where he was or what he was doing at, at this time. His activities uh, were with the watchers, and his days were spent with the holy ones. And that's uh, <clears throat> probably a no-no here. Uh, I Enoch was the blessing. It was blessing the Lord, the king of the world. And suddenly the watchers called me saying, Enoch, scribe. And uh, the hyperlink there suggests um, that, you know, legend. Um, the legend is that Enoch was the first person to be able to, that, uh, you know, wrote something down basically. So that, that is an interesting uh, suggestion there. That apparently there's a legend uh, according to that. Enoch, scribe of righteousness. Uh, go to the fallen watchers who have left the high heaven. The holy eternal place and have defiled themselves with women and have done as the children of earth do and have taken unto themselves wives and greatly corrupted themselves on the earth tell them that they will not have peace nor forgiveness of sin um so they're 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 damned absolutely they don't have uh, an option to uh, get repentance through jesus christ uh they've made a decision and i mentioned this in part one or two um where it basically says that they've made their decision um they no turning back for them they can't repent <clears throat> for they will not delight in their children. They will witness the slaughter of their beloved ones and will weep over the destruction of their children. And even if they petition for all eternity, they will not obtain mercy or peace. So salvation re, uh, through repentance is only available to man on earth, uh, not to the mighty men, not to um, the these interbred um, you know, species, whatever you call them, of man, not to the, uh, not to the giants, not to the angels. Um, what... Jesus Christ uh, provided is for man, uh, man alone, and not for these these other beings here. So that's an interesting uh, point to make. Um, so if you consider aliens and all these other things um, that are likely just you know spirit beings, um, they would not have salvation uh, according to this, because uh, uh, you know effectively man, uh, sorry God, uh, provided um, uh, provided an option. Uh, you know, the grace through Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins, he provided that only to, to mankind. Um, Enoch went and said, Azazel, you will not have uh, peace. A severe sentence has gone forth against you, and he will put you in bonds. Your actions will not be tolerated, nor will your mercy be granted to you because of your oppression and all the abuse, godlessness, and the sin which you have taught men. Then I went and spoke uh, to all of them together, and they were all afraid and seized with fear. And trembling, they asked me to petition the Lord for them, for forgiveness, because from this point on they could not speak with the Lord, uh, nor lift up their eyes toward heaven, ashamed on account of the shame of their sins. So they now realize it, um, but uh, you know they would have known this uh, before that uh, that they could not turn back, and and they can't now, so they're stuck. <clears throat> so I did it as they asked, and took their petition in regard to their individual deeds, forgiveness, and peace. And I went off and sat down at the waters of Dan in the land of Dan, which is south of the land of the Mount Hermon. I then fell asleep and dreamed about their chastisement and heard a voice instructing me to, t to tell it to the sons of heaven and reprimand them. And when I awoke, I came unto them, and they were all sitting gathered together, weeping in Abelsail, uh, which is between Lebanon and Senesser, with their faces covered. I, re I recounted before them the dream, and I spoke words of righteousness and reprimanded the fallen watchers. 
So the final judgment. This is the record of the words of righteousness and of the reprimand of the eternal watchers I was command, commanded to give by the Holy Great One in that vision. I will now relate what I saw in my dream with my tongue, the flesh, and the spirit, and the breath of my mouth that you may understand with your whole heart. Just as he created man with the power of understanding the word of wisdom, he, cre he has created me and given me power to reprimand the watchers, the children of heaven. <clears throat> I wrote out the petition, but in my vision, I saw that your petition will not be granted unto you throughout all the days of eternity. So uh, God has denied the, the p petition um, given by Enoch um, on behalf of the watchers here. <clears throat> Your judgment is final. The decree is, from this point on, you will be bound on earth. Throughout all the days of the world, you will not be able to re-enter heaven. So they're stuck on earth now. They can't go up back up to heaven like they could before. <clears throat> and they're also bound. So apparently, they don't have the ability to exercise their supernatural abilities at, at this point. So I, I, I'm wondering, is that why we really haven't seen uh, too much... Um, overt supernatural things happening because they're all bound they were bound um, prior to the flood and um, they're bound now so they can't do all their magic and all these things that uh, they were doing prior to the flood and that's why all the things like magic and wizards and all this that's why that became legend because we don't really see it anymore and that's because they're bound <clears throat> but before you are bound you will see all your loved ones destroyed you will not be able to possess them and you will only be able to watch them fall by the sword. Your petition on their behalf or for yourselves will not be granted. Even though you weep and pray, this I have written. And some people would uh, would say, you know, God is mean there doing that to them. And well, they knew prior to uh, them deciding to uh, disobey God and come down from heaven onto earth, they knew that there would be no returning. Um, God does not do things without giving us the option, without telling us uh, what the truth is, without telling us uh, how it's going to be, and if we choose to deny that and do something else, that's on us. So you can't you can't put this on God. God is a holy God, and He's a just God. That means He gives everybody an opportunity, and uh, these uh, beings uh, chose to disobey Him overtly, and so there's no no going back here. <clears throat> now the dream of two houses. Again, this is interesting. Let's go to the uh, the hyperlink here. X L I I. The houses represent the two judgments. First the water and then the fire. So that's what I was speaking of. So that's that's interesting. Uh, and, and so we're going to start reading uh, about that here. This was a vision that was shown to me. A mist enveloped, the wor enveloped me and the wind lifted me up to the clouds of heaven. I saw stars and lightnings. Then I was lifted up to heaven where I saw a wall made of crystal surrounded by tongues of fire that frightened me. But I went through the tongues of fire and came to the crystal house. The walls and the floor were made of inter, made of interlaid crystals. The ceiling was like was clear like water, but made up of swirling stars and lightnings of a fiery cherubim in the midst of it. A flaming uh, fire surrounded the walls, and its door blazed with fire. When I entered into that house, I was uh, as hot as fire and as cold as ice. It was empty. And there was nothing delightful in the in it, not even a trace of life. Uh, I was so afraid, I fell on my face and saw another vision. Let's go to the <clears throat> links here. Uh, so the crystal sea is... Uh, and before the throne there was a sea of glass, like under crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round uh, about the throne were four beasts full of eyes, the form behind Revelation 4, 6. So, so the Bible speaks of that as well. So again, another correlation where it lines up with the Bible, uh, the, the canon. Um, and so it's pretty interesting stuff. Let's go one page back here. <clears throat> I just wanted to see what, uh, what it's suggested here. All right, well, let's go this way. Unfortunately, this uh, <clears throat> X live this keeps uh, changing uh, the format here. Okay, so the XL, I, I, what is that? 10, I'm not, sure, not even sure what the L means there. Uh, anyways, uh, it refers to 2 Kings 2 uh, 11 there. All right, so let's go on and. Uh, Uh, all right, let's start here uh, in verse uh, 15. There appeared 
so that's uh, describing what is described in the Bible as, as heaven, basically. You know, the, uh, the crystals, the interlaid crystals in the floor and, and the fiery cherubim and, and all that uh, quite interesting stuff. Um, when I entered into that house, it was as hot as fire and as cold as ice. It was empty and there was nothing delightful in it. Not even a trace of life. I was so afraid I fell on my face and saw in my vision. There appeared a second house, greater than the first. All of its doors stood open before me. And it was built of flames of fire, and in every respect, and so excelled in splendor and magn magnificence, to the extent that I cannot describe to you. And just think about that for a second, that uh, something is so amazing that you cannot, you cannot put it into words. And that's what heaven is going to be uh, for the Christian. We try to explain it. We try to, you know, people have visions and there's books written about it. Um, but you can't put into words the stuff that God has in store. And that's pretty, that's pretty amazing and exciting. So, uh, interesting, to, uh, great thing to think about. Um, and its floor was a fire and above it were lightnings and the path of the stars and its ceiling also flaming fire. Inside was a lofty throne made of hoarfrost with wheels shining as bright as the sun. And I heard the voices of the cherubim streaming of flame fire, flaming fire flowed from underneath the throne so brightly I could not look directly at it. The great Lord sat upon the throne. His raiment was brighter than the sun, and it was whiter than any snow. None of the angels could enter or could behold his face by reason of magnificence, magnificence and glory. No flesh could behold him. And I remember Moses, uh, I believe it was Moses, when he came down from the mount after talking to God, he had to have a bag over his head uh, because his head shone. The flaming fire was all around him, and a great fire stood for him, and none could come close to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, uh, yet he needed no counselor, and the most holy ones uh, who were around him never departed from him, day or night. Until then I had a veil on my face, trembling, and the Lord called me with his own voice, and said to me, Come here, Enoch, and hear my word. And one of the holy ones came to me and lifted me up to the door and bowed my face downwards. <clears throat> and I bowed my face downwards. A judgment of the Ancient of Days. He said, Fear not, Enoch, righteous man, the scribe of righteousness. Go say to the watchers of heaven who have sent you to intercede for them. You should intercede for men and not men for you. Uh, why have you left your, the eternal heaven? And this is basically God saying, you know, why did you leave heaven? You knew you, sh you knew you weren't supposed to. So this is all on you. Why have you left eternal heaven and lain with women and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men by taking them as wise like the children of earth do and begotten giants as your son? Again, that's where the giants come from. Um, although you were holy, spiritual, living in an eternal life, you had defiled yourself. So they were holy. They were spiritual. They were living an eternal life. And they gave all that up. Um, they already had that. Um, it's, it's us humans who don't have eternal life out of the box. Um, we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We need the death of Jesus Christ on the, on the cross to pay for our sin and to recon reconcile us to God so that we can have eternal life again. And um, so these angels, uh, they, they knew it, and uh, they chose to say, you know what, nope, we're going to follow our lust, and uh, we're going to give up eternity and uh, sleep with the daughters of men. And that's, that's what they did. Uh, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women and have begotten children with blood of flesh and have lusted after flesh and blood as the children of men do who, who die and perish. This is why I gave them wives, that they might beget children by them so that nothing might be wanting to them on earth. But you were formerly spiritual, immortal for all generations of the world, which is why I did not appoint wives for you. They were already eternal. They didn't uh, need wives. And spiritual beings uh, have heaven as their dwelling. So they're not even supposed to uh, leave heaven. Origin of demons. Uh, my judgment for the giants is that since they are born from flesh, they will be called evil spirits and will remain on the earth. Because they were created from above, from the holy watchers, at death their spirits will come forth from their bodies and dwell on the earth. So there were giants in the land after the flood, and the Bible does record that. And uh, so that seems to be uh, agreeing, again, with the Bible there, uh, where, it, where it says that um, 
Uh, God's going to uh, let them remain, basically. Because they were created from above, from the holy watchers, at death their spirits will come uh, forth from their bodies and dwell on the earth. So there's spirits, apparently, roaming the earth from the giants, um, waiting for the final judgment. The heavenly spirits will dwell in heaven, but the terrestrial spirits who were born on earth will dwell on earth. So they're not going to go up, uh, back up to heaven or, or somewhere else. The evil spirits of the giants will be like clouds. They will afflict, corrupt, tempt, battle, work destruction on the earth, and do evil. They will not eat nor drink, but be invisible. That's interesting. That means uh, man can't see them. And, and sure enough, um, that, that's kind of, uh, kind of what we understand. Uh, we can't see them. We can't sense them. Uh, but they are working evil. Uh, but we always have uh, the angels around us and, and Christ Jesus in our heart. And uh, Christ Jesus keeps them at bay at all times. And he protects us uh, from these. And it's a very evil world, uh, even, even if we don't see it. They will rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them. When the giants die and their spirits leave their bodies, their flesh will decay without judgment. In this way, the race will cease to exist until the great judgment in which the age uh, will be wholly consummated over the watchers and godless. So the final judgment uh, is coming uh, for them. And God's going to take care of them. Um, but um, again, Enoch confirms that, that, yes, there were giants in the land. And the Bible does speak of the giants in the land. <clears throat> Now tell the fallen watchers who have sent you to intercede for them. You were in heaven, but did not learn all the mysteries, just the worthless ones. So apparently um, the watchers that were in heaven, that were righteous, that were did have eternal life, um, uh, apparently they didn't know all the mysteries. And uh, you know, according to uh, Enoch, uh, they only knew the worthless ones, the ones that weren't worth very uh, much or uh, worth nothing. Um, you know, the knowledge of, uh, well, anyways, the, the knowledge of magic and these sort of sorceries and that sort of thing, and all the other things I listened part two uh, of the uh, of the videos there. And these in your heart hardness you have taught to the women, and through the, these mysteries, women and men produce much evil on earth. Tell therefore, tell them you will not obtain peace, and. Um, so yes, the, they were not supposed to teach humans that. So a lot of trouble, a lot of legends, a lot of, a lot of apparent mythical things, uh, I think, really did happen. You look at all the fairy tales, you know, the fairy godmothers, and, and you know all the, the magical things that happen, happen in these fairy tales. Um, likely, there is a lot of truth to a lot of them, a lot more than you think. And, um, and that's because these fallen angels taught men, and they weren't supposed to. Um, so we don't see a lot of it going on right now. Um, because these, uh, uh, you know, these these giant these spirits are bound, um, but uh, the knowledge was there at one point and uh, um, caused a lot of evil and trouble uh, on the earth. All right, so I just I just flip flip back the page and, and it changed format again. But anyways, we're in the same place. Um, I, I finished the two sections there. Um, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, just reading through it, um, so many thoughts uh, come into my head. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, I will leave it there for tonight. Thanks for watching, guys. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to find Jesus. He died on a cross about 2,000 years ago for my sin and for your sin. We're all sinners. We're saved by the grace of God. And uh, he came to die for you and me. And uh, you just need to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And that's it. You become uh, you, you uh, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit enters your heart and uh, you become eternal again like you were meant to be, like God created us all to be. And uh, we will uh, live in eternity with, with God. And uh, well, the cool thing is that one day, if you are saved, then you'll get you'll get all the background on this. You'll know the truth of all these books and you'll, you'll have so much more uh, clarity and information uh, when we do get to heaven. And we'll actually be able to see and maybe even watch the videos back of what occurred in these days. Um, so that's going to be interesting. So thanks for watching again, guys. Uh, we will live there for tonight. And uh, we'll see you uh, on Monday in the next video.